Hello and welcome everyone. Have you ever heard of Darwin's finches? They're named after Darwin, but what is their significance? Stay tuned as we explore this interesting topic and what it has to do with the theory of evolution and natural selection. If you're curious to know about issues relating to science, religion, or both, make sure you subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell button so you can be notified when I post new videos. The term Darwin's finches is something you might have run into before. But how is it that these birds became so well known and why? My name is Suhaila Smith from riseoftruth.com. This topic isn't just for the birds. Let's take a look at what this topic is all about. Darwin's finches are also known as the Galapagos finches. Charles Darwin traveled to the Galapagos Islands during one of his famous voyages on the HMS Beagle in 1835. The Galapagos Islands are an archipelago of 13 larger islands and 100 smaller islands located 600 miles or almost a thousand kilometers off the coast of South America. They contain a diversity of unique plant and animal species that are not found anywhere else. This is a very important point to consider. Imagine that these life forms are isolated to this portion of the world and can't be found anywhere else, not anywhere outside of these islands. Some of the animal species include giant tortoises, iguanas, fur seals, sea lions, sharks, rays, crabs, and 26 species of native birds, and many more. Now back to Darwin. When he reached the islands, he was focused primarily on the geology, especially the volcanoes, having known that volcanic eruptions were responsible for creating these islands above the Earth's surface. However, he was also interested in animal life. In a letter to his sister in July 1835, he wrote, I am very anxious for the Galapagos Islands. I think both the geology and the zoology cannot fail to be very interesting. The first island in the Galapagos that Darwin visited was Chatham Island. He wasn't specifically focused on finches at the time. Rather, it was the mockingbird that he was paying attention to. He had already observed the Chilean mockingbird when the ship HMS Beagle sailed along the coast of South America from Chile to Peru. But this mockingbird on Chatham Island had distinct characteristics different characteristics, including that it was more tame. So he was recognizing that some of the birds and other animals on these islands were similar to those on the mainland, yet they definitely had different, distinct characteristics. When he traveled to the next island, he found yet another mockingbird that differed significantly from the one on the previous island. So he observed variations based on location in the mockingbirds and also variations with other plants and animals. And he recorded his observations, collecting a variety of bird specimens, not just mockingbirds. Some of his notes included the following. Animals on separate islands ought to become different if kept long enough apart with slightly different circumstances. And it wasn't just the case for animals. It was also the case for plants as well. He wrote, There is even a difference between the inhabitants of the different islands, yet all show a marked relationship with those of America, though separated from that. So where do the finches fit into all of this? If you're getting a clue or already know the answer, please comment below. Now, after his travels to the Galapagos, he returned from his voyage with various bird specimens and handed them over to John Gould, a bird illustrator and ornithologist. Gould confirmed that the mockingbirds were of three different species, but there was something else he confirmed that Darwin just wasn't expecting. He informed Darwin that some of the other birds that Darwin had labeled as blackbirds, grosbeaks, and finches were actually all finches. They looked different than one another to such a degree that he thought, Darwin thought, that they were different birds but they were actually all finches, 12 different species or variations in all. With this, Darwin had recalled the conversation he had with the man he had met during his travels to the Galapagos Islands, 
who spoke of the tortoises he observed on the islands. He said that if any tortoise from any island throughout the Galapagos were brought to him, he could identify the island it was from based on the tortoise's appearance because each tortoise was unique to a particular island. Darwin drew a parallel between the tortoises and the birds. He concluded that the different varieties of finches were new and distinct forms that weren't found anywhere else, much like the tortoises he had been told about. Yet, they were closely related to the ones that were found in South America, which was the nearest mainland. Darwin, though recognizing similarities between the birds initially, couldn't help but notice their differences, and he made many notes in his journal. One of the differences, the well-known differences in the traits of these birds is their beaks. One has a beak for spearing insects, another for eating seeds on the ground, one for getting seeds from cacti, and one for getting nectar from flowers. And some have beaks for other purposes, even for obtaining the blood of seabirds. These birds are called vampire birds or vampire finches for short, but fortunately they can only be found on the Galapagos Islands. The point to be made here is that these finches are all distinct based on their environment. Darwin wrote further in his journal of research as saying, the most curious fact is the perfect gradation in size of the beaks of the different species of the Geospiza. Seeing this gradation in diversity of structure in one small, intimate related group of birds, one might fancy that, from an original paucity of birds in this archipelago, one species had been taken and modified for different ends. So what's the significance of all this? Well, based on Darwin's findings, we see a clear example of adaptation of various organisms based on the environment they live in. Specifically, these organisms exhibit what is called adaptive radiation, a process by which organisms diversify rapidly from an ancestral species into a multitude of new forms due to a change in the environment or new challenges. It's rapid in the sense that these changes have occurred over a relatively recent period of time, and with Darwin's finches, that time frame is the last few million years. They are considered to be the fastest evolving vertebrates in the world because of their ability to adapt quickly to the new and changing environment, despite the fact that these diversified birds started out from a single common ancestor. So with all of this information and much more, Darwin was able to develop his ideas and draw some very, very important conclusions in his book on the origin of species that he wrote regarding evolution by natural selection. He said, the relations just discussed, including the very close relation of the distinct species which inhabit the islets of the same archipelago, and especially the striking relation of the inhabitants of each whole archipelago or island to those of the nearest mainland are, I think, utterly inexplicable on the ordinary view of the independent creation of each species, but are explicable on the view of colonization from the nearest and readiest source together with the subsequent modification and better adaptation of the colonists to their new homes. So there you have it, a beak or peek into the history of Darwin's finches. But where did this term originate? It wasn't from Darwin. And now we can understand why, since we know he wasn't even aware that the bird specimens that he had collected were all various species of finches. The term Darwin's finches actually was coined by Percy Lowe, a surgeon and ornithologist in one of his publications in 1936. And it was popularized by David Lack in his book, Darwin's Finches. So now you also know where the term Darwin's Finches comes from. The Galapagos seems like an amazing place, doesn't it? And these islands give us so much information about the diversity of organisms based on their geography and is evidence for and supports the theory of evolution. 
There will be more about this topic of geography and evolution in future videos. I also have a PDF that you can download for free about some of the other amazing organisms that live on the Galapagos Islands. And if you want to join a community of curious, inquisitive people just like you, please join us on Facebook at our Rise of Truth group, where we discuss many topics of interest on our journey to discovering the truth. We look forward to having you there. Thank you for watching.